Cool. So I think I'll kick off with um, just a few Brand USA slides before I hand over to Della to talk us through Capital Region USA. Um, I'm sure many of you are very familiar now with our Brand USA slides, so I'll just rattle through them very quickly. So um, just a quick intro to the team. You've got myself, Georgie, and then also Arva. So anything we can help you with, please do get in touch. I think you've all got our details. Um, thank you so much for joining us on Brand USA Global Marketplace for the webinar today. Um, if you haven't already done so, we do encourage you to have a look around the platform. So we've got um, our US partner pavilions and pods. Um, these are all broken up into the regions and you can connect with partners directly through the pods by dropping off your business card and your fishbowl. Um, and you can also add to briefcase any collateral that they've got download that um, so you've just got that to hand um, when you're working. We've also got our video on demand room which I'd encourage you to go and look at if you haven't done so before. So we've got our Go USA TV um, on there and also our enrichment series on there. So um, a few weeks ago we had our USA training day and all of the videos are there from that in case you didn't have a chance to watch them at the time. And if you do have any difficulties at all, please do contact the help desk in the lobby and they'll be able to help you. We've also got our um, other Brand USA resources, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with now. So first up, we've got our USA Discovery Programme, which is our online training tool um, with badges. So do take a look at those if you've not done so. And it's also where our monthly incentives live. So this month we're running our Southeast Incentive where the first prize will be a Fortnum and Mason's gift box and four runner-up prizes of a pina colada candle to get you ready for summer. Um, and next month, it's gonna be the Midwest that we'll be focusing on for our incentive. So details of that to follow and um, do sign up for our newsletter to get full details of that. We've also got our travel trade website where we've got loads of um, great destination information. It's also where we've got our insider guides. So we've got over 30 on there, which are all multi-state. Um, and all thematic. So do have a look at those for inspiration and guidance. If you've not done so already, there's plenty on there to keep you busy. We've also got our COVID-19 resource link. So that is where we have collated all of the different state COVID-19 guidelines just in one helpful place for you. So hopefully that'll become um, really helpful as hopefully borders start to reopen. And we've also got our indicator dashboard, which has a state-by-state -state breakdown of how case numbers are moving in each of the states. So hopefully we'll see more and more of those turning green as vaccines continue to be rolled out. Lastly, we've got Go USA TV, which is our um, streaming service. There's loads of great content on there from across the USA. So do take a look at that. And it's also, we've got our two feature films. So do give those a watch if you've not done so. Coming up in our webinar series, um, we've got these all confirmed up until the 14th of July, so please do save the date. We'll have partners from each of the destinations joining us, um, so please do join us for those, and they will be in from Brand USA Global Marketplace as well. So that is it from me. I'm going to now hand over to Della um, to talk us through Capital Region USA. So over to you, Della. Thanks, Georgie. Hello, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen and go on to my PowerPoint. Can you see that? No. You can't see that yet. OK, hold on. Sorry. Let me do... Can you see that now, Georgie? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, perfect. OK, um, right. Welcome, everyone, to the Capital Region USA. Um, as you can see from the first slide, it's basically a region made up of Washington, D.C., the capital, and then the two surrounding states of Maryland and Virginia. So this is where we are on the map, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you this anyway, but it just kind of gives uh, you an orientation as to where we are in comparison to other US cities. Obviously, we're up on that northeastern seaboard. So if you head north um, from us, you reach Philadelphia um, and then New York and Boston. And this, as I'm sure you know, is actually a, a well-worn route as far as Amtrak um, rail services are concerned. So it's a really um, easy way if you want to get customers between those cities is to actually use the rail rather than um, trying to drive because obviously 
within Washington DC itself, we generally don't suggest that you have a car. So if you've got people that are coming to us from New York, for example, as you can see there, it's 209 miles, it's about a three and a half hour rail journey. So we're pretty well connected. Um, obviously, as you also know, Washington Dulles is the main international airport from the UK, um, which is obviously wide, widely used. So Washington DC, obviously one of my favorite cities and I know I might be biased, but I love it because every time you go, there is something different there and you've never, you never get a chance to see it all. So you can just keep on going back. Um, and obviously one of the most famous sites, I guess, that a lot of people associate us with is that National Mall, um, which is over sort of two and a half miles long. Um, and it's an area where a lot of the Smithsonian institutions um, are based. So there's 17 of those um, and they're actually celebrating 100 75 years soon um, as an anniversary um, and a lot of them are based down here so if your clients go to DC I think a lot of people if they haven't been to DC and maybe they've been to New York they have this kind of misconception that DC is this Manhattan style kind of um, you know skyline and a huge density of buildings and DC is not really like that as you can see it's quite low rise um, it's uh, lots of green open spaces it was designed by a Parisian and you can kind of get that feel when you're there with these you know really lovely wide avenues um, and a, a kind of really spacious feel to the city so as you can see at the bottom there some of our more famous uh, monuments and war memorials and the Martin Luther King uh, Jr memorial there on the far right hand corner that's just some of those that you can that you can visit so we're all about impressive monuments and obviously the White House too. Um, you can't actually access the inside of the White House now. You used to be, be able to do that some while back, um, but um, it's not accessible right now, but you can go to the visitor center and obviously go all around the outside of the building. Um, the Lincoln Memorial is one of my favorites with Abraham Lincoln sat there on his throne overlooking the reflecting pool. It's the one that's in many, many movies. Um, and one thing really just to note is that nearly all memorials um, um, galleries and museums, the vast majority of them are free of charge in DC. So that's one of our real USPs. You know, when I first went to DC, my children were quite young. Um, they wanted to go into the Natural History Museum to see, you know, where the Night of, U of the uh, Night of the Museum film would have been filmed. Um, and, you know, so if you only want to go in for a couple of hours or even less than that, you know, you can actually just hop from one um, museum and attraction to the next without constantly, you know, having to find admission fees. It's very flat in a lot of cases in DC, as you can see there in the bottom left hand picture, there's loads of ways to get around. Um, biking is very popular, either with a guide or on your own. Segways, obviously, ferries. Um, we have an excellent um, metro system, which is the tube as well. Um, just some more shots again of the marvelous museums. You can see on the left hand side one of the newer Smithsonian museums, um, the African American um, History Museum, which is definitely one of the most popular and I haven't still managed to get in there yet. Um, but all kinds of museums for, for whatever your clients interests are. Also DC is made up of lots of different neighborhoods, um, as are most American cities of course. Um, as you can see a picture here of Georgetown on the left, which a lot of people asked to stay in. It's slightly outside of the main downtown area, um, but linked by um, a, a dollar bus called the DC Circulator. Um, and, you know, very much a high end, great for shopping there. And obviously the Georgetown University is there too. Um, the right hand picture is U Street, Ben's Chili Bowl, famous because um, the president, former president Barack Obama used to go there uh, to eat um, and continue to do so at times during his presidency. And you can sit on the seat where he used to sit. So um, it's obviously their claim to fame. Adams Morgan, great for nightlife and every kind of um, ethnic food you can imagine. Um, you're never going to go hungry in DC. You know, we, we have every type of restaurant to suit every type of palate and budget. So moving on to um, Maryland in the um, Appalachian Mountains shots you can see here. Um, basically, if you head east or west out of DC, you've got complete contrasts to the city. And that's what makes it a great area to actually explore because within this area um, of, of really not massive mileages, you've got mountains, you've got coast, you've got cities, you've got small towns and a lot of history as well. So you can see here, this is the Appalachian mountain shot in, in Maryland. Appalachian's obviously the um, oldest mountain range in the US. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, you can see the little 
you know, covered bridges and um, historic towns like Frederick, for example, also quite a lot of Civil War history here. So if you have clients that are interested in that, some of the obviously the biggest battles were fought um, in Maryland and Virginia. Um, so there's quite a lot of interest in that in this region. Baltimore, um, made famous, I guess, by the film Hairspray. Um, it's had such a massive regeneration in recent years. It, it really, every time I go again, I see something different. Um, and this is the um, Inner Harbor area, um, which is really, really a, a cool area to explore. They've um, kind of done what the Americans do so well and taken sort of former um, warehouses and buildings like that and completely transformed them. And so you've got great places to eat down here, shop, um, um, a lot of history, you've got museums, um, there's also an area called Fells Point, which um, is here on the right hand side, which you can see is just full of history, cobblestone streets. Um, it's also got British nautical history there too. So Fells Point and the Inner Harbour is, is a really cool area of Baltimore to send your clients to explore. National Aquarium obviously as well, um, again, uh, just a really great attraction there, particularly for families. So Annapolis is um, the, cap the capital city of Maryland and really Annapolis is all about the water because it's really um, on that Chesapeake Bay, which is one of the largest estuaries in the US. Um, I've, I've done various different boat trips there. You can do anything from a sort of two hour trip to, you know, if you're that way inclined, hiring your own schooner and, and going out for, for a whole day. Um, it's got a huge seafaring history. It's the home of the US Naval Academy, which is one of the top, um, obviously, um, schools for the Navy. You can tour the, the Academy. It's a really great tour. Um, takes you around the majority of the campus. Obviously, some areas you can't visit. Um, you do have to have to actually show ID as well well to access the, um, the, the area, but it, it's a really great tour. Um, and as you can see, kind of every picture of the Chesapeake um, is, is obviously about the water. Um, great seafood, um, everything from sort of casual dining, the kind of crab shacks you can see on the far right bottom hand picture is great fun, um, but it also obviously high-end dining as well. You can get out in the water, kayaking, um, as I said before, boat trips, anything really. Um, it, it's just a super place to visit. Um, some more shots again of the various different beaches. Um, Ocean City is one of the, the more sort of uh, bigger commercialized beaches in Maryland. Um, Crabs, very famous for their crabs and crab cakes. Um, the uh, little lighthouses on stilts that you can see there are very um, specific to Maryland. They're not the sort of wooden lighthouse. They're not the brick built ones. I mean, they're wooden um, and they are really, really cool actually to, to see. There's also the Inner Perry cabin in the far right hand bottom picture there, which is where the um, film, uh, The Wedding Crashes, if you remember that with uh, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn was filmed. Um, um, and it's just a beautiful resort property with a, an amazing spa there as well. So on Assateague Island, which um, again is in, is in Maryland, you have this famous wild um, sea ho wild horses here that apparently came when a Spanish galleon um, sank uh, hundreds of years back. And that's really kind of how they originated, um, rumor has it, on the island. Um, but they're quite an attraction in themselves. Um, and the Chesapeake Bay Tunnel, which is obviously this amazing um, feat of engineering linking Virginia with Maryland. Um, and, you know, as you can see from, from those pictures, a pretty stunning way to get between the two. Virginia Beach has, um, I, again, one of my favorite beaches, really. Um, I went when my children were fairly young and they absolutely loved it because it's got one of the longest pleasure beaches in the world. Um, and it's also great for water sports, dolphin watching, getting out there. As you can see, huge expense, expanse of sand. So social distancing, not really an issue on this kind of beach. Um, there's an aquarium there. There's an IMAX theater, shopping, dining, really, really great for families and in a straight line if you came down from Washington DC it's 200 miles um, and a lot of people just don't think that there will be beaches of this kind anywhere near, near DC so um, again you know if you've if you've got clients that are going to be doing the city sites and then they really want to chill out afterwards if they head you know in either direction either east or west they can they can come down and and have some time on the beach Again, Sandbridge, another um, amazing beach destination with those wide open spaces, lots of um, you know, areas to explore and do water sports. 
So an area not far from Virginia Beach is Williamsburg. It's kind of about 50 miles up the road um, and it's 150 miles from D.C. itself. Again, if you just head south from D.C., Williamsburg is um, kind of known for being part of, of what you call a, an historic triangle. The Colonial Parkway links three, air, three attractions effectively, Jamestown, Yorktown and Colonial Williamsburg. Um, and Colonial Williamsburg is one of those amazing living history museums where you can visit the school house, the governor's mansion, the smithy, um, you can watch parades, um, and it, it's kind of like um, frozen in time in the 1700s, so it tells the history um, of a fully functioning colonial city, um, which was obviously uh, British uh, ruled, and at the time when they weren't talking revolution. Um, you've then got Jamestown, um, uh, which is where actually the, the first English colon colonials came over um, in 1607. So over 400 years ago, the very first ships bringing about 120 English settlers um, arrived and they named the river, um, the James River after our King James and Jamestown. Um, so you kind of have a three pronged history story here. You have Jamestown where the first settlers landed. You have Colonial Williamsburg, which tells the story of it as a thriving colonial city. And then you have Yorktown where they basically decided they didn't want us anymore and they were going to be um, the United States. So it, it gives you kind of all three sides of the story. Um, Bush Gardens there on the right hand picture. Again, just to show you that Williamsburg is a fantastic family destination. Um, it's the same Bush Gardens as you get in Florida, um, just on a different theme with the same kind of thriller rides that um, either you like or you don't like. I'm a bit of a wuss on them, but you know, a lot of people like them. Um, just up the road from Williamsburg is Richmond. Again, famous for its um, Civil War history, of course. You have a, a famous Civil War battlefield museum there. Um, we also have amazing vineyards, um, again, not far from Richmond in, in an area called Charlottesville, which is at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, and we are really well known for our wine. So you can actually get on a tour, which takes you to say two or three vineyards. Um, some include food as well, um, but certainly in the summer months, there's uh, an amazing thing to do just to sit there and uh, you know, take in a nice glass of wine while overlooking that kind of scenery. So another attraction in Charlottesville is Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello. Um, it, this was his plantation home, and obviously Thomas Jefferson was one of the founding fathers, one of the early presidents. It's a really fascinating tour. Um, also, Charlottesville is home to the Virginia University, one of the oldest universities in the States. Um, and it really does sit in the foothills um, uh, of the Blue Ridge Mountains, really, um, as you can see from this bottom picture here. And the Skyline Drive is uh, this amazing skyline. Uh, it, it's part of the Blue Ridge. The Blue Ridge Parkway and the Skyline Drive kind of butt off one another. Um, this is uh, a road that kind of goes through the Shenandoah area, the Shenandoah National Park. Um, the great thing about the Shenandoah is that it's a very accessible national park. You don't have to be a Bear Grylls type to um, have to, in, to be able to enjoy it. There's lots of pullouts wherever you go along the Skyline Drive, which is over 100 miles um, long. You can pull out at things like Devil Hollow waterfalls, lots of different um, scenic picnic points. As you probably know as well, there's two national park lodges within Shenandoah, um, and I've stayed at, at one of them and I've, I've toured both of them, and they, they really have amazing views. Uh, but equally, there are towns that serve um, this area outside of the National Park as well. One of those is actually Lure, um, and that's famous for Lure Caverns, as you can see in that top right hand picture. But in the Shenandoah National Park, you can do pretty much anything um, from horseback riding, as you can see there, to hiking, biking, kayaking, um, all the kind of activities you would expect in a national park. Um, just really kind of going back to some more um, kind of countryside scenes here and vineyards again, we're, we're again, we're keen on our wine, as you can see. Um, and it really is everything from small towns to obviously big cities, like I said before, and the coastline in this kind of tour. Mount Vernon worth a mention because um, this is the plantation home of George Washington, obviously the first US president. Um, it's a really great tour. It sits on the Potomac River, so an incredibly picturesque position there. Um, definitely recommend it um, if your clients are in DC and want to actually get out and see, see the plantation home. 
Um, just a couple of nods to other destinations um, which are not downtown DC but have really great links into DC. Alexandria, one of my favourites, and Arlington um, both serve DC and have great transport links. Um, uh, Alexandria has a, an amazing um, sort of cobbled street um, area that leads down to the river, lots of boutique shopping, dining, um, and it's just a really great area to stay in if you don't want to stay right in the in the downtown um, heart, but you still want to be well connected. Arlington, again, obviously famous for Arlington uh, National Cemetery, and again, a must-see destination and linked by the metro system, by that subway system we talked about earlier. So lots of different seasons, of course. Um, winter, it can be a bit snowy, as we all know um, in our area. Spring, as you can see, an amazing picture there of the cherry blossom. Um, and this is, a, a, there's a cherry blossom festival which takes part takes place in the spring. The cherry blossoms are out in March and April every year. And I always get jealous when I see my DC friends posting the pictures on Facebook because it really is stunning. Um, fall is also an amazing time to go. Uh, we have those oranges and reds and, and the sort of colors that you perhaps always think about New England for, but we have obviously in Virginia too um, and in Maryland. So, you know, don't discount this area for the fall. It really is super and actually starts later and goes on for longer. Um, summer obviously goes without saying we have lovely hot long summers um, you may need the AC a little bit when you're in Washington if you're there in July and August but it is um, an amazing destination in the summer to be able to enjoy the beaches etc um, and get out into the mountains as well and that's it from me thank you thanks so much Della absolutely beautiful part of the world and thank you so much for telling us all about it I'm just going to stop the recording and then we'll um, make a start on our Kahoot quiz. So please.